So Georgie, um, many fabulous females out there, but which women in business have inspired you and your career? And that could be from the celebrity world or obviously more from the professional and your local business world as well. Yeah, so I've been inspired by so many women I've worked with and for throughout my working life. But I think in my entrepreneurial journey, it's actually been women I found in the digital world. So um, women who I haven't actually physically met, but have found through podcasts digital content so the the one in particular who i i really admire and been inspired by is a lady called jamie kern lima who founded a company called it cosmetics in her living room with her husband and later sold it to l'oreal in a record-breaking deal and she became the first female ceo in the history of the company but i think what's amazing about her is not just that incredible achievement it's the fact that she really openly shares um, everything she had to overcome to get to that point. So she had to overcome a huge amount of self-doubt. She faced loads of adver- adversity. She had to navigate her way through rejection after rejection. And just understanding her story, I find really inspiring. I find her as inspiring a person, but also I have learned so much from from her. And if I feel that I'm facing a challenge in business, for example, I think about what she went through um, and I think, well, if she got through that successfully and found a way through, then what I'm facing here is nothing compared to that. And therefore, I kind of borrow her belief or her kind of um, story in a way so that it will help me to navigate through what I'm facing. I think it's really important to find role models like that, whether or not you've met them in real life or whether you, you might never um, to have them to kind of pull you through and lean on their story to by your own is, I think, a really valuable thing that we're so lucky to be able to do in this day and age where, you know, so much is available online and role models um, are, are out there. And it's in the case of, of being able to find them. And, and does, she learn about pod- does she have a podcast or how do you learn more about her? So she doesn't herself, but she she has featured on many podcasts. So I first found out about her through a podcast that Lewis Howes run, which is called School of Greatness. Um, he has a huge amount of different guests on his podcast, and she was one of them. And I first saw an interview with her there, and then after that, searched for a number of other interviews with her because I was so interested in her story. And then just watched as many as I could because whilst a lot of the answers might or, or questions and answers might be the same, there's always different angles and always different information that you can um, that, that you can gain from, li- from listening to a lot of different interviews. So I I got to understand her story, and each time I hear her speak, I'm more and more inspired by what she's achieved and what she's now doing to kind of share that story and help other other women, particularly but other people. Um, you know, create what, what they want to create. And remind me of the name, just so repeat that out, and then I'll enter yeah. it into the video as well. But well, so what's her name? Full name? She's called Jamie Kern Lima. Okay, and she founded It Cosmetics. It Cosmetics. Thank you. So, talking about podcasts, are there any other podcasts that you listen to or inspired by, whether that's in business or like just general personal development growth? Yeah, so Lewis Howes' podcast I mentioned, so the School of Greatness, I think is brilliant because of the, the range of guests that he has on there. So anyone from an entrepreneur like Jamie Kernima to health gurus to psychologists, pro athletes, it's a real r- range. And I find every time I listen to any of his episodes, I'm really inspired and interested. So I think his is great. I also listen to Holly Tucker's mm-hmm. Conversations of Inspiration. So Holly is one of the founders of Not on the High Street and often has our entrepreneurs, um, you know, start up, very established. So recently I listened to her episode with Charlotte uh, with um, Charlotte Tilbury, for example. But, yeah, which was an amazing one. And I think, again, it's just the, the range of guests that she has on there, her style I really enjoy. But also, you know, there is that link back to Not on the High Street for me personally. Yeah, I, I've just started listening. As a result of me interviewing other women, they re- other women have recommended Holly Tucker's podcast, so I have started listening now. And I think she has a beautiful, gentle way of supporting on you know creative entrepreneurs in particular. So yeah, I I, I like hers. 
Um, so um, we touched on this slightly, but imposter syndrome. Women are renowned for suffering, but not every woman, and definitely some men do as well. But may I ask, do you suffer from imposter syndrome? And if you do, how do you overcome it? <laughs> yeah, so um, I, I think the answer to your question is yes, uh, I do. And But I have a very different way of looking at it now. And I think that came about because I realized that it's not just me who feels it. And whilst that sounds obvious, until you realize that, um, it can be this big, scary thing that you think is just you feeling it. But actually, once you realize that it's really normal and that most people you're watching or listening to or working for or with experience it on some level, it changes it. Uh, and I think that's what changed it for me. And actually, I heard Stephen Bartlett talk about it in a really interesting way recently. And he said, he, thought, he actually goes as far as to find situations where he'll feel imposter syndrome, um, at which I thought was amazing. But he said, really, imposter syndrome is taking yourself outside of your comfort zone. And therefore, instead of looking at it as something scary, it's actually something that is really powerful and a way of growing. So by reframing it in that way, it's an opportunity for growth rather than something to fear and um let it hold you back he actually goes as far as to put himself in situations where he knows he's going to feel it because he knows the benefit will be great so i thought that was really interesting and actually um turning something that scary into a real positive so i suppose it's like a muscle that needs to be exercised until you get strong in it yeah i, th I think so yeah i think that that's what he was saying and i think it makes perfect sense okay i may, I may try 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 to myself but because it is without going out of your comfort zone you do not grow do you you do not grow but um imposter syndrome can definitely be debilitating content until we grasp it and like you say when you do know that other people are suffering with it and just like openly talking to people about it as well can help you move forward definitely yeah okay. so um more back to business really now um what are you working on now within the e-commerce space that excites you yeah so i think there's a really exciting project, uh, a rollout that I'm working on with GS1, the company that um, created barcodes. So I'm working with them on the future of barcodes. So the linear barcode that we all know and love on the back of a pack, which is used for retail purposes currently, is changing in the coming years. And that will become a QR code, which the retailers will do the same thing. So if it's banned, retailers will be able to pull the, the relevant information that they need. But it's also got a consumer-facing um, benefit. And so a consumer with a smart smartphone can scan, whether it's in-store or once that product's in their home, they can scan and there's a number of different things that they can then find out about the product, whether it's about the product itself. So for in our case, it's how to guide, you know, how to use coffee, the coffee that we provide, how much coffee to use, et cetera. Um, or about the brand or about the sustainability. There's a number of different, so we work with Biodoc, which is a product whereby all that information is stored and presented to the consumer. So I think that's a really exciting project, kind of future retail, which I'm involved with, and um, it, it's being rolled out as we speak. So our sister brand currently have a number of those QR codes appearing on the back of pack, which is uh, going to be really exciting to see some of the data come through. That is really exciting. And many would that overcome some of the challenges that Amazon sellers have with not owning their customer details? So is there that more interactivity with the brand and building brand loyalty and then improving customer retention? Do you think that will help these the, the, the brands that are on Amazon to get more connected with those customers that have transacted on Amazon? Yeah, I think so, absolutely, because there's that direct... Um, there's the opportunity to speak directly to a consumer. So, uh, you know, if it's, I think some brands are going as far as to put that QR code into the images within their product listing. So that actually a consumer can scan from a product listing before they buy. So rather than in a physical retail store, there's that, op that opportunity. And also once you have that product at home, that consumer can then scan and find out directly about your, your business, your brand, your product. It's got your contact information linked to social. It's it's very much that one-stop shop for all of your 
in your brand information. So talking to the it gives an opportunity to talk to the consumer in a completely different way, which is really exciting for brands. So, exactly. I love that. So how, when will that be rolled out or is it being trialed in a certain part? Is, is, is it being trialed in the UK or US or how, how is this kind of like rollout um, happening? Yeah, so in the UK, it's live. There's a push to get started. There are many brands that already have that QR code on pack, us being one of them. Um, so it's very much out there to to go after. Um, retailers, as, I, as far as I understand it, are definitely on board updating systems as we speak. Uh, retailers are at different stages, but it's very much happening. And at some point in time, we'll be mandated to switch over to the QR code. So it, it, it's coming. And the way I see it is get ahead of the game and yes, yes. It's most of it right now. Thank you for that. Thank yeah, the really GS1 uh, on their website has a huge amount of information. So 2D barcodes, if you look, look that up on their website, a huge amount of information about it. Um, but yeah, really exciting. And, and it's very much a global rollout as well. The each market is at different stages, but uh, I, I think some are already very advanced. But yeah, in the US as well, rolled out. There is, I can't see any from limits from you telling me this now. There's not really any disadvantages to this at all. Um, not that I can see either. Uh, I think it's only plus side. I think, you know, retailers, obviously, there's there's an uh, implication for them to up, upgrade systems so that their systems can scan a QR code instead of a barcode. Um, but from a brand perspective, it, there's, there's only plus side. It means a switch from current packaging to new packaging. Um, potentially and in the, the interim period might require a barcode and a QR code so there is that logistical consideration but the QR code ultimately will present um, only positive. Well thank you for sharing that with us um, and very interesting to be part of that project as well George I imagine. Yeah really really exciting it's 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 uh, feels like being part of the future and um it's a really exciting way to understand understand it more, but also test and see what the consumer's interacting with, and um, and really start to use that data to inform our own decisions moving forward. Yeah, great way of building the brand further as well. Okay, so um, TikTok shop. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> thoughts on the platform. Yeah, so I'm really excited by TikTok shop, and actually found out a lot about it through the Channel X event that we both went to last October. And um, since then, I've been um, starting to work out how we can launch on TikTok Shop. So we plans are definitely in place on um, one or two of our brands to launch on there as a test. Brand new, it's unknown. It's a completely different way of of approaching e-commerce. But I think you know when you look at the numbers that we saw back then in October, it's phenomenal. So getting it right on TikTok Shop is. A huge opportunity um and you know, we're open to testing so that we can make the most of that opportunity yeah absolutely and so will your um will you be using influencers as part of that like that testing period yes we're we're kind of still figuring out the best way to launch we are considering influencers and partners and creators um because i think that is is a really um natural way to you know you to work with someone who knows the platform well um but we still are kind of working out the right strategy or the best strategy given how uh, uh, much of an unknown it is at this point yeah exciting times ahead i think for tiktok and then whatever will be next after tiktok <laughs> yeah exactly 